from across the tri-state. This is KHQA Sports. Well, this proved to be a history-making night in Payson as the Seymour 8th graders became the first junior high volleyball program ever in that school's history to bring home a state trophy. Now, Payson today beat Lewiston in straight games for the 2A third place trophy tonight and left little doubt about it with a 25-13, 25-20 straight set win in which Haley Hickerson had a whopping 15 service points in that victory. The girls then returned home to Payson Seymour tonight at 9-15 and were treated to an impromptu pep rally from their community and from their adoring fans as you can see right here. It included a fire truck ride through town, chilly as it might have been tonight, and a chance for every single girl on the team to make a speech to their fan base in that big pep rally. A wonderful ceremony tonight. I think a great time had by all and congratulations to those Payson Seymour eighth graders. The future very bright for this volleyball program as we look ahead to the future should be fantastic. A lot of good girls in that group and they sure were excited tonight to bring home that trophy which you see right there. Let's do some scores today. Not many of them because of the cold weather, but Western did get in a baseball game and Isaac Hively got in his first victory of the season, striking out 12 Mark Twain Tigers in an 8 to 1 win. Evan Earhart on the day 3 for 4 at the plate with a couple of RBIs. And speaking of Western products, Keaton Baker today playing at HLG. Huge day in the second game of a doubleheader as his team beat Ashford. Baker 3 for 3 at the plate with four ribbies. How about some highlights from game number one? Charles Rapp on the hill and in full command in Rap Rap City all right there as he gets the job done with the strikeout. He and two other Trojan pitchers would combine on the day on a shutout for seven innings. Great stuff from all three of those guys. Defense none too shabby either as Braden Bennett behind the plate throws out a would be base runner in the first inning to avert any further threat. Pick it up in the bottom of the second. This is the world of Moorcraft. Drew Moorcraft with a triple to the deepest recesses of the ballpark. That would set the wheels in motion for the first score of the day. And again, it's your catcher, Braden Bennett, this time with the sack fly to short left field to get the run across. Made it one to nothing Trojans at that point. Bottom of the third, we pick it up yet again. Runner in scoring position here for Andrew Pollard. Flashes the bunt, but no, the quick use of the aluminum right here smacks it into the gap that makes it a two to nothing lead in favor of the Trojans. They're really never going to look back in this ball game. Great name Gunner Western going to step to the plate and deliver another RBI rip right after Mr. Pollard shot as uh, HLG gets the complete sweep today. They win that second game by the final count of five to nothing in this one. Well, he was a bit of a late bloomer for the Quincy High soccer program, but Jason Ebbing's prototype size and raw gifts make him a most intriguing futures pick as a college keeper, one that might ultimately prove a recruiting steal of sorts for Culver Stockton. Jason came into practice and uh, saw his size and his ability to uh, get down quickly. He's very athletic, and I think he'd come in and, and really make a difference for our team. You know, this program's really turned around. Uh, Coach Ardell, he's done a great job here, and um, I support the team and everything they're doing around here. Culver Stockton, big news on the academic front today. Chelsea Stanley, the pride of Keokuk High School today, was named an NAIA Scholar Athlete for her achievements both on the court for basketball and away from that. Interesting sidebar on the story, her best friend, also from Keokuk High School, Aaron Allmeyer, who now attends Grandview University, was also similarly accorded, which says an awful lot about those two young ladies and the community from which they hail. From the smallest of small town basketball in Paris, Missouri, to a traditional Juco power at Moberly, and now to the biggest stage in the NCAA Division II basketball, it's been a wild ride for John Gillum. But with three wins starting tomorrow, that young man, that outstanding gifted point guard, can bring closure to his extraordinary career with a national title. You know, it is a dream finish because, I, like I said, I've never been, in a, never been in a game like this. You know, I've always been close, but never got to a point like this. And, I mean, even though we're here, you know, we know – how we play and stuff like that. So even though we're here, you know, we know that we can we can do some damage while we're here also. We we actually have 10 new guys this year, and the chemistry that has evolved from the beginning of the season until now is incredible. So oftentimes you don't see stuff like that, but a lot of guys on this team have known each other prior to being here in Central Missouri. And uh, just from the beginning of the year when we stepped on campus together, this group has evolved as, you know, one. Being close, being close to the team has really helped us get to where we are now, and I really – I honestly believe that we can – you got to take it one game at a time, obviously, just like we did in the regional tournament, but I believe we can get it done. And John's individual evolution from 30-point-per-game scorer in high school to true point guard has been impressive as well. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, you know, coming out of Paris and not playing against uh, the elite competition, going to junior college and allowing myself to, 
step on the court right away and get confidence in myself and just knowing what the game's all about, seeing the transition from the from the heights. You know, I, I was typically the tallest player on my team at Paris and anybody that we played. So now we're seeing 6'10 guys and stuff like that and becoming more of a perimeter threat and then transferring over to Central Missouri where it's, it's a more physical type of game and more structured. Uh, you know, I really, I really tried to evolve in a way that can help out the team any way possible. Uh, it was a, I'm not saying it's a difficult transition because I have a mindset of, I mean, whatever you got to do to help the team out is what it does. And going from junior college to here at uh, Central Missouri, you know, um, I've just, I've done what I've had to do to stay on the floor and help out the team any way possible. And uh, what I saw from my freshman year until now, it's, it's really helped on the defensive end and just uh, keep the, be a, play a more of a leadership role and a type of role I, like that. And you can watch John on the NCAA website tomorrow at 1 o'clock as Central Missouri takes on Southern Connecticut State. Don't know much about them other than that they're supposedly very, very good. Okay, we'll wait for those updates tomorrow.